Hello everyone and welcome to Sermon Prep uh, for this week as we'll be celebrating the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time um, and we are still in year B. Our first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, um, the book of the second law, uh, if, if you want to translate it. And uh, of no surprise then it does speak of, of the law. Um, the opening lines say that Moses spoke to the people saying, Now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances which I teach you, and do them that you may live. God is giving statutes or, or law to, to, to the people of, of, of Israel, and uh, one of the results of observing whatever God is teaching of doing what the law uh, requires is that it gives it gives life that is how people are going to survive in that day and age that through the mouth of Moses whatever God is teaching them they do and they practice and that is what is meant to give them life and I'm sure we know that for for the Hebrew people there were quite besides the Ten Commandments there were, there were a lot of laws uh, that that, that, that they had to obey um, and as time went on as the, the nation grew the laws grew even more so in the heart of the Jewish nation was the importance of the law uh, and what God wants uh, for, for his people to do uh, the Lord God says that you must keep them and do them for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people so these laws also meant that it would portray this nation as an understanding nation, a bright nation, a people who are enlightened. And how are they enlightened? They were enlightened by God himself. And the way of life thereafter would be a way of life of people that have been enlightened uh, by, by the law. But also God giving the law to, the, to this holy nation and to his people, meant that somehow God was closer to them because that's, that's how uh, it, it, it ends. For what great nation is there that has a God who is so near to them as the Lord God is near to us whenever we call upon him? So by giving that law, God goes into conversation, if you like, with his holy people. Um, it's not just... A remote controlled nation but it's a nation where God is fully active in their lives um, and it starts by observing what God wants for them and taking it further from there on. Our responsorial psalm uh, is from Psalm 15. O Lord who may abide in your tent? Uh, in other words, O God who who can, who can live with you? Who can commune with you? Who can be um, of one with you? Um, and then it, it basically gives what I'd call the idea of, of the perfect person, of the perfect Christian, if you like. Um, all, those, all those characters and someone who lends no money at interest, who accepts no bribe against the innocent, uh, in today's world, the idea of, of accepting no bribe uh, is almost a foreign concept in us because we've li we are living in a world where people understand that they get a salary at the end of the month, but somehow they must also get bribes to do what they are paid to do, to make life easier for other people. It's not enough that I get paid, but I also want something on the side for me. Um, so those are that's the sort of person God that God would says uh, will have the abide will have the ability to abide in his tent, uh, a person who, who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked. People would still understand that there are some things that are unacceptable, are unacceptable for the Christian life, unacceptable to hear, to look at, to partake in. A person who doesn't keep quiet even when things are going wrong. Um, so that's, that's a responsorial psalm and telling us exactly 
what sort of people can abide in God's tent or what sort of people can come closer to God. And our second reading is taken uh, from the epistle of, of, of St. James, um, a guy that we don't uh, hear from regularly. So from this uh, this weekend, we won't be hearing from St. Paul, but uh, we'll be hearing from a letter of, of St. James. And St. James highlights here that we should be doers of the word. Once, once we listen to what God wants of us, if you like, once we listen to God's law, to his intention, um, to the way that he instructs us to, to, to live uh, with our friends and, uh, and, uh, and, and brethren. And St. James says it's not enough just to hear. It's not enough just to put it in there, but we must also be doers of the word. We should be people who get strength from the word, that we hear it, and then we are put into action. We go out and, and, and do that. And his final line in, in the second reading, he says, religion that is pure and undefiled to God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from this world. How how much of me and you are, are, are actually living exactly that? Uh, we you understand that true religion, as I always say, is not a matter of my God, my Bible, my prayer life. To live in a life of community, uh, to live in a life where we, we, we spread God's message, not just by words alone, but also by deeds, even to our brothers and sisters who are living on the periphery, who are living outside of of the context of, 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 of our faith. People who have never met Jesus, people who have never read the Bible. St. James is saying that we go to them and bring alive what we have heard. It's not enough just to hear, but we have to be doers. And our Gospel reading is, uh, is from the Gospel according to, to Mark. We've been reading from, from the Gospel of Matthew for the last few weeks. Uh, we'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, and the context of, of this Gospel is that the Pharisees are asking uh, Jesus' disciples that why, why, why does Jesus and, and his disciples eat without washing their hands? Um, that, was, that was a law. Remember we, we said that and as Israel grew or the Jewish nation grew, more laws were, were added into their life. That was one of, of, of the laws. Um, and basically, it, it was based on the fact that the washing of the hands was a sort of symbolism to say, Lord, make me clean of heart. Make, purify me and sort of make me, make me holy. But then now the problem with the Jews is that they had lost all of that. They didn't understand that the washing of hands was a symbolism. Yes, you had to wash your hands, but like St. James says, you also had to go into actions. Now the Jews were washing their hands for the sake of washing hands. Uh, it now had no relevance for them. They were sticking too much to the law. They were sticking too much to the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law. They were sticking too much to what the law was saying instead of what the law was trying to teach. And how easy it is for us Christians to fall into that, uh, where we, we go into a place that we, we do things for the sake of doing them. They no longer have any sort of benefits for us. Uh, they, we no longer profit in any way for them. We go to church for the sake of going to church. We receive the sacraments for the sake of receiving the sacraments. They no longer produce any value in our life. Uh, and by Jesus refusing to, to wash his hands as part of, of those ancient traditions, he's saying that it has lost its purpose. It is not life-giving anymore. Maybe it calls us to look at the things that we've been taking for granted. All those things that we've been doing for the sake of doing 
but they no longer take us far. They no longer lead us anywhere. Are they still worth it? Or maybe is it those things that we have to review and in order to to revive, if you like, to bring back to life um, what was the essence of it, what was the result of, of, of it in, in the first place. So this coming Sunday, then we'll be looking at that. And maybe for, for your meditation as, 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 we, as we approach um, this coming weekend, what is it in your life that is meant to be life-giving but has become a routine? And it no longer comes from the heart it's now just a function. It's now just one of the things that you do for the sake of doing them. And how do we go back to God and make sure that whatever we do, they still find life giving personally, but also they make God happy. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we'll meet on Sunday as we go uh, deeper then into those readings. Have a great week forward.